So, what to use for a bat, right? Because uh, there are many things that we need and uh, it's good to go through a list so we have a general overview of what is really needed. But there are also many things that we believe we need and while actually are not essential, right? So let's go through the essential um, elements that we need to give to our dog a very good bat, right? First and foremost, a bat tub, if we are happy, <laughs> sorry, if we are uh, lucky enough to have a bat tub at home, but that's not necessary, right? A shower may be wonderful too, and uh, if not, also a basin, a basin big enough to put your some water and the dog in the basin, that's wonderful, right? And if you have like a um, a big a big um, jar, you know, where you can put water in it, and 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 so it it will helps you to uh, it will help you to put the water on the top of the dog when you have to rinse, for example, that's also uh, a good thing to have. Secondly, and importantly, two towels. Why two? Um, let's say one for uh, drying your dog after the shower is over, but one is very important. It can go at the bottom of the bathtub or the shower or at the bottom of the basin. So that allows your dog to have a better grasp on the surface of that place, right? So, he, he, and you see sometimes dogs because also have nails and, and, and there is, they are in the water so they cannot grasp, they cannot, they feel more unstable already for some dogs. Having a bat is a stressful uh, experience, and we need to, and we need to improve that. We need to make, to display some behavior that, uh, help the dog in feeling that that is a positive and pleasant experience. But a little things, a little trick, let's say that we can use is also to use a towel at the bottom, so the 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 the, the pose of the dog goes on the towel, and so they he can feel more stable on that surface, in a, despite there is plenty of water around, right? So, and the other towel, as I was saying, is to dry the dog after the towel is over, after, sorry, sorry, the shower is over. But of course, that depends on the size of your dog. You may have a very giant dog and you need anyway three towers just to dry the dog, right? So, keep in mind, so just always have a towel, if possible, at the bottom to facilitate the grasp for the dog and then one or more towels to dry the dog, right? This easy to remember, but um, don't forget that towel at the bottom, that's very important. The brush, of course, it can be handy while we are washing the dog, so it can scratch a little bit on the skin. Always remember, try to be gentle, of course, don't, 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 I mean, don't break the skin of your dog, but, you know, having a brush, it can be handy to take some fur, some coat away, the coat that uh, that leaves due to the shampoo, due to the to the water, right? So it helps you to 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 increase the cleaning, the the the, the refreshing process on your dog coat and skin, right? And of course. Um, if you can have some cotton, some um, light gauzes for for making some hair plug, let's say, uh, in some cases it may be advised advised because some dogs uh, may really hate having uh, the water in their hair canal, uh, and uh, in some cases that can also cause some. Uh, here infection, right? So if your dog is happy with that, you can create some uh, um, plugs, so cotton plugs, with and 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 use them while the dog is having the bath. And with some gauzes, uh, you can also uh, dry after you take the the cotton plugs out of the ears after the bath is over. With the gauze you can dry even further and that also helps 
with that little bit of water that maybe is around the, the hair canal and, uh, and the gauze, it helps you to clean the hair canal. And that is also very important to do every, every when you do a bath, but also regardless of the bath, regardless of giving a bath to a dog, that may be a good practice to do also regardless, right? So to keep the hair canal clean, uh, so we avoid for the dog to get some infections. But again, do not exaggerate, right? Don't be always there in cleaning the air canal and, uh, and ask to your vet. I mean, if the dog goes uh, regularly to a vet, that's one of the first things a vet would check. Yeah, how is the hair canal? Because uh, that's uh, a part, uh, an anatomical area of the dog that easily not just get in, get some infections for some reasons, but also needs to be inspected to check other uh, conditions of the dog, right? So your veterinarian, your veterinarian will check that area of the dog uh, immediately uh, as soon as the dog is at the vet clinic or the veterinarian come comes at home. So also have around some oils, some solutions, something that you want to use. Let's say, for example, you can uh, have some, uh, uh, you can prepare some uh, uh, water with oat that you may want to mix with your shampoo. We're going to talk about shampoo in a moment, but uh, oat is very good for your dog's skin. So unless your dog has, uh, I mean, if your dog skin conditions are very good, you can mm, put some water that you previously prepared by putting some oat in the water and, th and then the oat releases some properties and then that water can be mixed in the water in, uh, with the shampoo that you're going to use to give back to your dog and that oat uh, it has very healing properties and, uh, and uh, supporting properties for the skin of the dog and the coat too. Uh, conversely, if your dog has some in, uh, um, irritations, uh, better to not use the oat and maybe you can add some uh, um, tea tree oil to the shampoo, to the, to the water that you are using for the bath and uh, or some other solutions. It may be the case of uh, colloidal water, but colloidal water is better to use maybe well, you can use some while the dog is having the bath, so you can mix that with uh, shampoo and also a little bit right after the bath, right? Because that helps in healing, let's say, an irritation that the dog has in some areas of his, uh, f uh, of his skin, right? So see what uh, what you think is appropriate for you. Those are already wonderful products, oat tea tree oil and colloidal water, but you may happen to discover other things. But keep in mind that the bath experience can be an optimal moment to also uh, use some oils or other types of solutions. Of course, water we need, as we have been mentioning so often already, uh, water needs to be warm, so not cold, not hot, of course, a very good temperature that the dog likes. And shampoo. Shampoo requests uh, a very, uh, let's say, a specific attention, right? And we know, many of us know already that for dogs, we should not use any type of shampoo. We should not use especially human shampoo, right? And we're going to see why. Because dogs have a specific type of pH uh, for the skin, the pH is what regulates. For every creature, have a certain type of pH. Every living being have a pH which determines the level, the optimal level of acidity of the skin or neutrality, or if a skin is uh, acid or alkaline. Alkaline. So we don't go too much into this detail. But just for your information, for for those who are not aware of that already, we humans have a pH level that revolves around 5, a pH of 5, and dogs have a pH level that revolves around 7. That's why we have in human soap, let's say some soaps are sold as being op optimal 
for human skin and to take care of your skin and they have 5 or maybe 5.5 pH level, right? That soap that is maybe wonderful for humans is not for dogs because the pH level for dogs is different, is um, higher, so is a higher level of alkalinity or acidity uh, so to say. So uh, dogs uh, need their they dog, dogs need their shampoo, a shampoo that have that has a, a higher level of pH, so pH 6.8 or pH 7.2 or, or 7 or 7.3. You will find that information on the label of a dog shampoo that you will find and that you will provide and again in the shampoo you can put also a few drops of uh, solutions or another products oils essential oils that may be appropriated according to the type of skin of your dog or the type of situation if the dog's skin uh, is uh, needs to heal from some irritations or any other um, any other special needs that your dog uh, coat and skin may have. I want to uh, mention that I have a, another course that um, talks more about holistic care and also essential oils and uh, um, herbs and uh, roots that can be helpful not just for your dog skin but also for your dog behavior and healing in more in general. So um if you're curious go to check that but long story short back on track so dog shampoo is very important uh, needs to be uh, shampoo designed for dog with a specific ph for dogs and to conclude with this lecture we should say a very last and important thing so when it comes to give a butt to your dog there is a very another important very important elements that we need to keep in mind and to get into this picture that is patient and love patience because we need to be very patient especially with some dogs that do not really appreciate that type of experience and again we need to be gentle we need to be supportive and encouraging so the dog can learn that that's a, a very uh, that can be a pleasant experience also because as we have said that experience is not just for washing but it's also an experience that increases the bond between us and our dog because we will be handling the dog and caressing and brushing and shrink shrink how to say and and squeezing the dog in every possible way so and rinsing the dog of course with water and uh, so that's also an opportunity to to experience that touch which uh, also express our love for our dog and uh, we need to do that with the best intention i know for some uh, dog but also for some uh, dog parents for some people is also a stressful experience because there is water all around the house and then the dog after the bath runs on the carpet and scratch all around the sofa and put that water leaves the water all around the house so we i know it can be a stressful experience for us too sometimes right but we need to breathe deeply and try to make that experience very pleasant if it's not yet if it is not yet and that will be um, may happen may turn in, into a wonderful a great a great moment of sharing uh, with our four-legged friend